Hello viewers, human source is the most important resource in any organization and productivity to a large extent depends upon the willingness of human resources to put in effort to achieve organizational goals. The film on motivation deals with the concept and theories of motivation as well as the techniques of motivating employees. The part one of the film on motivation deals with the concept and part two deals with theories of motivation. Then part three deals with the techniques which can be used to arouse and sustain the motivational level of employees. Let us see the first part of the film on motivation. Well, good morning participants. Today the topic which I am likely to deal with is motivation which is very crucial from the point of view of management. Now, if we look to any organization or any institution, any organization or any institution is nothing but a collection of people, isn't it? Who constitute organization or institution is the people who work in a particular organization or institution. So when we say it's a collection of people, these people work in coordination these people work in coordination with each other to attain the organizational goals so what is more important in any organization is the organizational goals which have been set by the organization and it is the people who make it realistic or these are the people who attain the organizational goals. So if we look to the people that means the human resource which is available in any organization is the most important and the most crucial resource as far as the management is concerned because it is very easy to manage material but it is very difficult to manage the people. The people are the most complex resource in any organization. So from that point of view, people, they vary in their behavior, right? No two people exhibit the same kind of behavior. They just differ from each other and thereby their level of commitment in the organization also vary. And if their level of commitment varies in the institution, their productivity also varies. And it is the task of the management to impel or encourage or derive its workforce so that the workforce is able to attain the organizational goals. From that point of view, when we say motivation, we are mainly concerned with the question, why do people behave in a particular manner, behave in a particular manner isn't it so what is the cause behind a particular behavior or what is the reason which is leading people to behave in a particular manner and when we say people behave differently there is diversity among the workforce so the study of motivation enables you to understand the behavior of people, that is why do they behave as they do, right? And from the managerial point of view, it becomes important that we develop an understanding of the concept of motivation 
that is what do we understand by the term motivation and we also take cognizance of the various theoretical explanations that means the theories of motivation and when we take cognizance of various theories of motivation they will lead to evolving techniques for motivating employees right because if we are not able to evolve techniques based on theories then we cannot simply take action that means we have to motivate the workforce so what is that the techniques which can be used to increase or enhance the motivational level or arouse the motivation within the workforce so this is the purpose and we'll deal with three different aspects the concept the theories of motivation and techniques for motivating employees and first of all we we'll take up take up the first aspect that is the concept what is it that cause motivation is nothing but the motives and this word has been arrived from latin verb movere right? to move and when we say motivation motivation means motives in motives in action and motives are nothing but rightly said these are the concepts you have developed over the years these are the cognitive structures which exist within the mind of an individual and these also are the effects that means the attitude attitudes of the individual the value system of the individual etc so this broadly can be referred to as internal frame of reference of the individual and all these things even the needs of individuals all these lead a person to behave in a particular manner to achieve certain goal that is the goal which has been set by the individual say for example the person is at present feeling very hungry all his or her energies will be directed towards locating a restaurant and satisfying the need for food one would like to satisfy hunger by locating a restaurant and getting something to eat or if you are walking on a road side you will always be looking for a restaurant you will miss all other shops but your attention will be di directed towards locating a restaurant so your behavior is goal directed and that goal is determined by the existing concepts the structures the effects the needs of an individual right they work as motives and these motives impel you to behave in a particular manner right in addition to the motives which are primarily internal there are certain external influences which are being exerted on the individual and which also impel him and rightly said by you that these are incentives or these are the stimuli which are present in the environment which motivates the individual or which lead him to a particular action right so we can if you look have a look at this transparency this is that any individual has internal motives or needs at the same time there are stimuli in the environment 
which are impinging upon the individual. Both these determine the kind of response the individual will make to the situation. Right? It is not only the internal needs, internal value system or attitudes which determine your response, but it is the situation also which may be rewarding to you that also determines your response to a particular situation. So, you would like to respond to a situation and you would exhibit some behavior. Right? Now, say for example, you have been assigned a job with a colleague, you dislike that individual, you have unfavorable attitude toward that individual, you may not like to interact with him or work with him, but working with him is rewarded by the organization because it is likely to yield some outcome which is acceptable to the organization and which due to which you are likely to get some recognition and your organization is going to reward you. So, your response to the situation is determined not from your internal needs, but from external stimuli which you are getting in the organization and you exhibit the behavior and show a performance which is rewarded by the organization. And when you show performance which is rewarded by the organization, that means you get some incentive, there will be tendency to repeat this kind of behavior, is not it? On the other hand, if you are able to satisfy one of your individual goals or one of the goals set by you, it will still strengthen your behavior, but needs which get satisfied they no longer motivate the individual, right? Or the needs which have certain blocks, there are certain blocks that you cannot reach the goal, you cannot satisfy the need, even that blockage can lead to reduction of intensity of the need or need in a particular individual and the person will not be motivated to exhibit behavior because it is his response or his satisfaction of the need is blocked. So, the intensity of the need will decline, right. So, when we say motivation, it is always goal directed, it is process and it has certain cause which is leading to a particular outcome. In nutshell, we can say that motivation is nothing but willingness to expend effort to achieve goals set by an individual, because individual is here more important. Unless and until there is some congruence between the individual goals and the organizational goals, right? The more match between the two or they are in consonance with each other, the higher will be the motivational level of the individual. If your institution wants to send you or your organization wants to send you for a particular program in which you are least interested or you would not like to participate, your motivational level for that kind of course will be very low. But in case you are also wishing to participate in that particular program and your organization also sends you, sponsors you for that particular program and when you come back it is related to your professional development, then both the organizational goal as well as the individual goals, they are satisfied or they are achieved and there will be higher level of motivation. So, the match between the individual goals and organizational goals is essential, otherwise the motivational level will remain very, very low on the part of the individual. In this part of the film, we have dealt with 
the concept of motivation. In simple, we can say that motivation is a process. It is caused by both external and internal factors of individual. Behavior of an individual is goal directed. So, viewers, in the next part of this film, we will deal with the theories of motivation. Thank you.